Greetings, friends, once again in the South Atlantic Sea. Coming at you off the coast of Africa, actually just off the coast of Namibia, heading towards South Africa. Want to do a little kind of shout out with some physical geography, all about the wind, the water, and deserts, believe it or not. And what got me thinking about this, as I'm podcasting off the port side of the ship, port is the left side of the ship, and I'm aft, I'm on the ass end of the ship right now. In fact, man over here, Eddie. Oh, you can see the engines churning that shit out of the back end. So we're port aft on the MV Explorer off the coast of Africa, and it's cold, man. Every one of the students are saying, dude, I, right now it's about, even with the sun full out now, it's about 50 degrees air temperature, about 50 degrees water temperature. This morning when I attempted to do this podcast, it was 45 degrees air temperature, 50 degrees water temperature with a high wind, like 25 knots. I couldn't even barely move. In fact, take a look at this scenery that I attempted to do earlier doing this podcast about wind, water, and deserts. Take a look at this. Now, it's high winds as always is the case apparently on the high seas. So I don't even know if this is gonna come out, but I'm gonna try to explain something to you really quick. Okay, now you're back. <laughs> the wind was blowing so hard, I didn't think that the sound picked up, but you saw the desert scenery behind me. You could tell I was chilly, right? It was cold. And so students were saying, hey, Boyer, how can it be so cold? Aren't we still in the tropics? And indeed, we were. We were just crossing over the Tropic of Capricorn, about 23 and a half degrees southerly latitude. So we actually were still fully in the tropic zone. The tropics are between the Tropic of Cancer up north, the Tropic of Capricorn, the equator's right in the middle. So just a few days ago, it was like 80 degrees outside. It was hot as hell. Everybody was laying out sunbathing. And now suddenly, a couple days later, only 23 degrees southerly latitude, still in the tropics, it's cold as hell. What gives, and what does that got to do with that awesome scenery of the Namib Desert that was behind me in that earlier scene? Because we're still off the coast of Namibia, and the entire coast is a little thin sliver, about 50 to 100 kilometers wide, throughout the entire coast of Namibia, it's full on the Namib Desert. And behind the Namib Desert is the Kalahari Desert. So how are all these things related that it's cold in the tropics, chilly in the tropics? It's so cold, it makes me feel like I'm getting ready for a football game uh, in fall season in Blacksburg, Virginia. It's that chilly. What's that got to do with the desert and the sea and the wind? They're all related, my friends, and here is how. If you look at a map of where deserts are in the planet, the driest and the biggest deserts on the planet, let's take a look. Use your geographic spatial perspective to pick out some patterns. And I'm only gonna pick on some of the deserts in the world because deserts form for a lot of different reasons. But you see where I'm at right now off the coast of Namibia. If you look at the western coast, the western fringes of big land masses, that's continents, on the western side of continents, at about this latitude, north and south of the equator, are some of the world's most famous deserts. Like the Sahara is on the western side of Africa, up in the northern hemisphere, at about this latitude. The Kalahari and the Namib are right here on Africa in the southern latitude. Let's jump over to South America. The Atacama Desert is about this latitude on the western side of South America. And if you even jump over to North America, the whole west coast is kind of arid and going down the Mexican coast, you have the Sonoran and some other big deserts. There is some relationship between that pattern and what's going on. Even if you jumped over to Australia, there's the Western Australian desert and the sandy desert on the western side of that big continental landmass. What gives? It's got everything to do, one, with water, two, with wind. Let's start with wind. All of these deserts I've named are in what we call the trade wind zones. Here's a map of the trade winds, of, of, of major wind circulation patterns on planet Earth. And at these exact latitudes, they're called just north and south of the horse latitudes for you mariners out there, uh, at about 20 to 30 degrees, or actually in the tropics 10 to 25 degrees, uh, north and south of the equator, the, there are the, uh, the northeasterlies and the southeasterlies. Winds are named from where they blow from. So in a general circulation pattern all around the tropics, winds go in a northeasterly or blow from the northeast uh, or the southeast, depending on what side of the equator you're in. So right now we're in the 
southeasterly trade winds. And these trade winds on both sides blow from the southeast and then cross across continents and across oceans in a big general pattern. And in the northern hemisphere, they blow from the northeast and come down and blow that way all around the planet. So what's the big deal about that? And what's that got to do with deserts? Well, because we're on the western sides of land masses, the trade winds, that is western, the northeasterly, north, uh, southeasterly blowing winds that are heading west, when they, they're filled with moisture, air is filled with moisture, and wind carries them. But these particular trade winds, when they're crossing over the continents, particularly say here in Africa, they're gonna release all their moisture over on the eastern side. So the winds are blowing the moisture from the ocean over the continent, and the moisture in the wind is going to, in the air is going to precipitate at some point, follows precipitation, gonna condense and follows rain. By the time it gets to this side of the continent, the air is all dried out. Especially going oh, right over there is the Kalahari Desert. It's going to dry that air out even more. So by the time that those trade winds carry that parcel of wind over to where we're at now, it's totally dried out. And dry air, obviously, is kind of sucking moisture from the land there and therefore it doesn't have anything to drop down as precipitation. So trade winds on this side of continental land masses are really dry winds that are pushing moisture away from the continent, thus creating desert-like conditions. And that happens here, and it happens in Atacama, and it happens in uh, uh, the Sahara, and in Australia. But I said there's two things that create deserts. So trades are a general pattern that affect the dryness and aridity here at these particular latitudes, on the western fringes. But more importantly than that, especially for the awesome Namib Desert off to my port side, is the water. We are in a cold ocean current really cold ocean current. And that's affecting not just the desert, but why it's so cold right here in the air that I'm standing in. And that's because cold, cold, cold ass ocean currents start in either the Antarctic that way, in this particular case, or if I was in the Northern Hemisphere, they start in the Arctic. And they come from the polar latitudes, very cold water that then circulates down towards the tropics, carrying their coldness with them. So what does that mean in this particular circumstance? Well, I'm actually in right now the, we're fighting against the Benguela, Benguela, Benguela cold ocean current from Antarctica that floats up uh, the coast, the southwest coast of Africa. We're actually steaming against it directly. So it's going that way. Uh, the Peru or Humboldt cold current goes up the west coast of South America. The California current, for you Californians, you know that's a cold ass ocean current. When you go surfing in California, the shit is cold, you got shrinkage. Even in hot summertime, that's a cold California current that's pulling cold, cold water down from like Alaska down to California. And that goes down the coast of California and Mexico. Uh, and you even have the Canary current, which I was in earlier on this trip. The Canary current floats down a Northwestern Africa, just on the fringe of the Sahara. Hey! The Canary in the Sahara, uh, the California current and the aridity there, uh, the Humboldt current and, and the Atacama, and here we are, the Miguela current and the Namib Desert, all are related. How so? Because this cold, cold, cold current coming in this direction cools the air above it. You can actually see my breath. Did you see that, Katie? You can see the breath. Even though we're in tropical latitudes, this cold current is so cold, it's cooling the air above it. So consider it like a conveyor belt that's moving all this cold water and the air above it is also becoming really, really chilled. So that's why it's chilly here even in the tropics. So that's kind of point one. That's why it's chilly out here. The air is cool, the, the current is cooling the air. That current from the Antarctic is cooling the air around it to make it chilly here. So what's it got to do with the desert? Cold, cold, cold air doesn't hold moisture very well. In fact, it can't hold it at all. The colder you get air, the less moisture it can hold. Think about it when you're in the winter time, in the dead of winter, and it hasn't snowed or rained for a while, and it gets really, really dry, right? And your skin gets all dry and starts to flake. That's because the cold air around your skin is actually rubbing the moisture away from your skin and causing it to dry out. And the same thing is happening on a continental scale here. These cold, cold, cold ocean currents floating up the west coast of these big continental land masses are actually rubbing moisture from the coastline. So you have these things in combination cold currents pulling moisture away from the land in all these areas in conjunction with trade winds 
coming from that direction that are pushing hot, dry air off the continent in the same place. Put two and two together and you got the awesome Namib Desert. And it is freaking awesome and it is freaking dry. This desert gets less than 10 inches of rain and most of it, I think most of it actually gets more like two millimeters of rain a year. And what else is interesting about this particular desert, the Namib Desert, it's probably one of the oldest deserts in the world. It's got really bizarre, unique wildlife because they've been evolving there for a really long time. And it's very similar to what happens with the California cold current over in California in about the San Francisco Bay Area. And for you Bayers, you know this. What happens when cold air comes into contact with hot, dry air from the continent? Cold air that has a little bit of moisture from the water and the hot, dry air, and it comes together, fog. And what you also saw in that earlier video snippet that I put in was the whole coastline was shrouded in fog, at least parts of it. Same phenomena in San Francisco, California. Those two air masses coming together, one from the water, one from the land, coming together to condense and form fog. And the Namib Desert gets most of its precipitation. It's not even that, it's just moisture. Most of the plants and animals in the Namib get most of their moisture from fog, not from rainfall. Does all that make sense? Why it's chilly here in the tropics, why there's a desert on all these trade wind latitudes that come in conjunction with cold water currents? Isn't this cool physical geography stuff? Are you learning anything about the world? I know I am. And the last cultural thing I'll throw in to finish this off is that this whole coastline, the whole Namibia coastline is desert. And behind it's the Kalahari. Have you ever seen the gods must be crazy? That's the Kalahari Bushmen that were in that movie. But in the Namib desert, uh, uh, fairly low populated. I think Namibia only has like 2 million people tops. And this entire coastline that we've been running down all day is also known as the Skeleton Coast. Ooh, skeletons. And why would it be called the Skeleton Coast? Because of that very fog, because of this atmospheric slash weather slash climate phenomena slash ocean current phenomena that keeps it shrouded in fog most of the time, most of the year. And when you have fog on an unpopulated coastline with not many markers, not many towns, and not a lighthouse to be seen, you have shipwrecks. So it's a shipwreck coast. Hopefully we won't go down to join the skeleton coast in infamy, but that's what I got about cool waters, cool air, and deserts here off the coast of, I think it's Warvis Bay, Namibia. Party on.